It was the 8th of October, 1834. Seven Jesuits from Ireland walked up one of these ghats. Unlike many others of their time, they did not come with a lot of money and power. They came with faith and a commitment to live that faith. By June of the next year, they started St. Xavier's School in Murgi Hatta on Portuguese Church Street. Later, the school was shifted to number three Park Street and again to 22 Chaurangi. In 1849, a seeming tragedy turned into a blessing for Calcutta and Bengal. A theatre named San Susi, located at 10 Park Street, had a fire accident. San Susi, however, would play a very significant role in education in Bengal. The 28th of November, 1859, was like any other day in Calcutta, except that these carts again saw the arrival of another batch of eight Jesuits. And this time, they were here to stay. Their superior was this man, Father Henry de Pelchin. He would not only establish St. Xavier's Calcutta, but also St. Xavier's Bombay and the Zambezi mission in Africa. Less than two months after their arrival, St. Xavier's opened on the 16th of January, 1860. That ill-fated San Susi at 10 Park Street was the venue. 1864 was a significant year both for Bengal and St. Xavier's. Horse-drawn school buses were introduced. If students did not come to school, school would go in search of students. That was the idea. 1865 saw the arrival of another eminent Jesuit who would contribute a great deal to the cultivation of science in the country, Father Eugene Lafont. Soon, he would start a series of lectures and scientific exhibitions that would end only at his death 42 years later. He laid the foundation for this magnificent physics laboratory at St. Xavier's. He was a scientist Jesuit. But his science was not just for the brains. In 1867, he observed a sudden fall in the barometer. He rushed to the government observatory and was told that a similar fall had been noted in the earlier cyclone. On the insistence of Father Lafont, a notice was sent to the harbor and other public places to brace for a cyclone. The cyclone was severe but many lives were saved, thanks to the timely intervention of this scientist. Acharya Jagadish Chandra Bose joined St. Xavier's in 1869. Father Lafont played a great role in the formation of this great scientist. This is the BA and BSc section of the college. The BA section was introduced already in 1867 followed by M.A. and then B.S.C. The Jesuits had a great interest in astronomy and this continued even in St. Xavier's. In 1874, the transit of Venus over the Sun's disk created a great deal of curiosity and scientists converged from all over the world in India and in Calcutta to observe this phenomenon. 
Among them was the Italian astronomer, Professor Tacchini. And he persuaded Father Lafont to erect a spectral telescope. Lafont, the scientist, sprang to action and raised funds to build this observatory. It became a point not only of scientific research, but it also contributed to social welfare by issuing regular weather reports and forecasts. The following year, 1875, the college enlisted a student who would become an eminent person not only in India, but also in the world, Rabindranath Tagore. His brother Surendranath and his nephew Satya Prasad joined the preparatory entrance class. Rabindranath was 14. He would refer to the influence of the teachers here even as a Nobel laureate. In 1931, he presided over a fundraising function here in the college and said, let me express as an ex-student my feeling of gratitude for your institution which was an inspiration for me in my young days. In 1877, the library was started with 150 volumes. Today, the Central Library has become a nodal place of research and serious study. The Gothals Indian Library and Research Society began with a magnificent collection of books donated by Archbishop Paul Gothals. It specializes in matters Indian, history, culture, philosophy, religion. It has a good collection of rare books and paintings. The great strength of St. Xavier's was that it taught you to think differently. It was a completely different uh, way of looking at things and thereby, thereby create a little heretics in all of us. Space was becoming a problem for the ever-growing college. So, in 1883, it was decided to shift the college department to 288 Bovazar Street. But this plan was not a success. By 1885, after considering other locations, they shifted back to Park Street. Once a Zavarian, always a Zavarian. The old students of the school and college have a very strong affiliation with their alma mater. The Ex-Students Association was started already in 1886 to collect scholarships for the poorer students. Today, they have come a long way. I had come from a school in Bombay where my classmates were excessively conscious of how wealthy their parents were, how important their parents were, what positions people held and so on. Whereas in uh, St. Xavier's, what I found was that these things didn't matter that basically the students of St. Xavier's judged each other not on such externalities, but on the kind of human beings we were. The college did not lag behind in sports. There were quite a number of games and athletic meets during the year. The year 1900 is memorable because Norman Pritchard, an ex-student, won two silver medals at the Paris Olympics. In 1928, a teacher of St. Xavier's, Mr. J.S. Hall, was selected to captain the team that represented India in Olympic sports held at Amsterdam. The college had very good hockey, football and cricket teams. You know, we used to have this class 9 versus class 10 football matches. So when we were in class 9, we beat class 10 by 6 goals and when we went to class 10, we beat class uh, 9 by 7 goals and out of the 11 players we had in our class team, 9 of us played for the school. And out of which, there were 4 of them who were the top 5 students in the class. On the 15th of December 1904, Father Edward O'Neill was appointed rector of the college. He was the first student of the college to be appointed rector. He launched the annual magazine, 
the Zaverian, which became a forum for students and professors to voice their ideas. 1907 saw the splitting of BA courses into BA and BSc. The Department of Chemistry was started. The university gave a grant of 10,000 rupees to set up the laboratory and buy equipment. 1910 was the golden jubilee year of St. Xavier's. No less than 680 students celebrated it for six days. The celebrations included a children's party where regardless of race, caste or religion, children from all walks of life were fed and entertained at St. Xavier's. As if a jubilee gift, the Calcutta Corporation decided to join number 10 and number 11 Park Street to make it into the present 30 Park Street, an address that would become significant for many in the years to come. Electric lights and fans were introduced in the same year. The college did not lag behind in fine arts. There was a strong tradition of theatre. Many plays, both classical and modern, were performed by the students. Father Weaver was a great person to direct the plays. Later, in 1950, the college would have a theatre group headed by none other than Utpal Dutt. These plays would be enacted to packed audiences and charity shows would be held for various causes. For me, 1987, 86, 85, are like yesterday, while 1998-99 is really further back. That's how vivid uh, those days were. Most importantly, what I learned from my fathers, my teachers, have always been honesty and giving 100% to what you do in life. St. Xavier's had borders from its inception. In 1924, this hostel now known as the Christian Hostel, was constructed. It would house 52 students with 16 single rooms. Today, over 200 college students reside in two hostels. If you had been absent the earlier day without any reason, before entering the class, you had to go again to the Father Prefect for surgery. And the usual practice then was for us, uh, not all, but some of us, we had three half, half pants on, three, because you were strapped. If you were late, if you were very late, you were strapped. 1925 saw the visit of the father of the nation to the college. Many Rajas and Maharajas sent their children to St. Xavier's. 1934, the tremors of World War II could be felt now in Calcutta. The US Army occupied the grounds of St. Xavier's. It was indeed a nuisance to have an army contingent in the compound, but it turned out to be a blessing in disguise. They paid a huge sum of money as rent. With some more support from Belgium and the public of Calcutta, the college would begin a six-year project of constructing a new five-story building which would finally house the college department. 1936, Father Achilles Verstraten is appointed rector of the college. He was a great educationist, a physicist and an equally good administrator all bundled into one. He would be the first Jesuit member of the Syndicate of Calcutta University. The tremors of Indian independence could be felt in the college. The 15th of August, 1947, Independence Day of India. There were great celebrations. 10 days later, they would begin in a small innocuous way a course that would change education in the college the BCom morning session. There were just 22 students at that time. Today, nearly 3,000 students attend this course. The man 
who ruled the morning BCOM single-handed for a quarter of a century, not only as a vice principal, but became an institution by himself, was Father Joris. See, JVS has taught me and instilled in me many qualities. And on top of the line is punctuality. The timing in Sanjeevas College is morning 6 o'clock. And there is no question that you can be late. There was a great need to train teachers in the art of teaching. The B.Ed. department was opened in 1955. 1960 was the centenary year of the college. There were 3,500 students. The general of the Society of Jesus, Father Pedro Arupe, visited the college in 1967. This is the first time that a superior general visited the college. His successor, Father Peter Hans Goldenbach, would visit the college not once, but several times. The leaders of India wanted students to participate in the development process of the country. Dr. Radhakrishnan had mooted this idea already in 1950. But by the time it came into effect, in the form of the National Service Scheme, it was already 1969. Father Gerard Beckers jumped at the opportunity and started the NSS in the college. Soon after, it was initiated in the country. The next big event happened in 1978. After a century and 18 years of its existence, the college became co-educational. According to them, the girls came here because it was not claustrophobic, despite maintaining good discipline. Another event that would rock the young in the city, literally, was the introduction of Zavolsa. It is not something to be explained, it has to be experienced. Nineteen eighty five was the Jubilee year. The college was a hundred and twenty five years old. The President of India, Gyani Zael Singh, graced the occasion. The following year, nineteen eighty six, the college received another international figure, Pope John Paul II. The college ground was the venue for the big event. In two thousand and three, the National Assessment and Accreditation Council, NAC, visited St. Xavier's College. After thorough scrutiny and examination, St. Xavier's was given the coveted A grade. Eventually, the University Grants Commission would declare it a center with potential for excellence, a status given to very few institutions in the city. The 1st of July, 2006, was a memorable day for St. Xavier's College. The governor, Sri Gopal Krishna Gandhi, had come to the college and in a ceremony he said, I hereby declare St. Xavier's College, Kolkata to be the first autonomous college in West Bengal under Calcutta University. In 2009, Father Felix Raj was appointed the principal. It was also the year when St. Xavier's had reached a big milestone, 150 years. The last 150 years, there has been, of course, emphasis on academic excellence. But that's not the only thing that we want to achieve. We want to produce men and women for others. That is, all those who pass through St. Xavier's should become leaders, men and women who have values, who go out and serve not only themselves, but the society at large. The world has seen its products in the persons of Jyoti Basu, Ellen Mittal, Hamid Ansari, Sanjeev Goenka, Bikram Ghosh, Shashi Tharoor, Saurav Ganguly, and the list can go on. It is an institution 
that blended strictness with kindness to bring out the best in the students. In short, it formed persons who are committed, conscientious and competent.